there are several iconic views that say England outside the London landmarks. For example, I think of here Great Gable and Wastwater in the Lake District and Malham Cove in the Yorkshire Dales. Now in southern England, that accolade goes to Seven Sisters and Beachy Head, as viewed here from Cookmere Haven. It is a captivating seascape, sometimes mistaken for the white cliffs of Dover, but just as symbolic in portraying the defence of the realm. This is a walk in two parts. The full walk, about 10 miles, is from Seaford to Beachy Head, plus a further mile into Eastbourne. But the Cookmere River estuary requires a detour inland. Ardnance Survey Map Explorer OL25 shows the entire walk. Hardy walkers on the South Downs Way miss this classic view, the trail instead making for Beachy Head over Seven Sisters. Day visitors can be more flexible as there are several car parks and the main A259 road is served by buses from Seaford and Eastbourne. I went by train to Seaford to join the vanguard way that soon ascends Seaford Head. As height is gained, you are in a different world. The benefit of doing this part of the walk, which is about four miles, is the gradual revelation of the big view as we descend to Hope Gap. Here the beach can be accessed by steps. The iconic Coast Guard cottages that feature in so many views is a bit further on. When photographing Seven Sisters from this headland, spot meter the chalk cliffs, otherwise detail will be lost. They are not completely white, you know. If necessary, correct shadows in post-production in Adobe Lightroom. If you are feeling energetic, Proceed inland and join the South Downs Way at Exeat. I think that's how you pronounce the hamlet. Exeat, not Exeat. It might be. I don't know. Now, you can start from here, but the car park is often full. No such problem when arriving on the bus. Whilst at Exeat, pop up the hill behind the visitor centre for an amazing view of the meandering Cookmere River snaking its way to the sea. This section of the walk requires more stamina. If you have ever thought that southern England is devoid of hills, you are about to change your mind. In traversing the Seven Sisters, what goes up must come down, and it ends on an up and the total ascent by the time Beachy Head is reached is over 2,000 feet, more than some fells in the Lake District. But oh boy, it is all very exhilarating. Burling Gap offers a timely break to recharge batteries, but the area sadly has suffered in recent years from severe gales and access to the beach may be a problem. I was lucky. There are no access problems keeping to the ridge, and after passing Beltoot, a former lighthouse, now a private residence, the next iconic view emerges, the famous lighthouse at Beachy Head, built in 1902. It is automated but not manned. Be careful of the edge, it is chalk and unstable and you will not see the overhang until it is too late. Don't let this spoil your experience. One of the most exhilarating walks in the country. Just be careful. Upon reaching Beachy Head, the promised land appears over the horizon. Eastbourne, well worth a visit and fashionable to boot. Because it is sheltered by Beachy Head, it is, in fact, one of the sunniest places in the UK. If preferred, there is a good train service from London, Victoria to Eastbourne, where the entire walk can be done in reverse to Seaford Station, but change at Lewis for London. As a bonus, your day ticket 
may allow you to return via Brighton and break your journey. I have done that in the past. Up here on the Downs, the photographic potential is boundless. I never tire of this place, and these photographs were taken over many visits. Light, and consequently weather courtesy of the English Channel, is what makes this place special and remarkable. I find winter more interesting when the sun is low and sets over the sea. Later in the year, it sets over land. When shooting into the sun, I use a small aperture to reduce flare. F-16, even 22, with larger apertures, F-11, 8 or larger, particularly with a zoom, unsightly flare becomes more of a problem than risking diffraction. You have, incidentally, more flexibility if you choose to use a prime lens instead. 